The member for Mildura. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. And uh, I am grateful today to rise to speak on the Crimes Amendment Non-Fatal Strangulation Bill 2023. Uh, I'll try and keep it brief, but often when I say that, it is seldom the case, as you well know. Uh, but I don't know, I'm not entirely sure how my body will react to uh, this bill, so bear with me. But it's actually something I consciously have in the past avoided talking about, but I heard the member for Lara uh, say earlier that she had been speaking about some courageous women who uh, had spoken about family and domestic violence, and that made me think of Kim O'Reilly, who has become a, an advocate. And uh, doing a podcast with, with Kim uh, got me to speak about my experiences 20 years on that I'd never spoken about out loud before. So I'm grateful now that this is uh, before the House uh, and becoming a standalone law in Victoria. The... Member for Malvern, Joy, Joy's Law, he refers to, to this bill as, he referenced that this bill is perhaps five years too late. Uh, I would suggest that it's 20, 30 years too late, but at least there's a name for it. Um, when I went through some experiences that I've heard referenced throughout the debate today, uh, it was like reading from a textbook, yep, the, the, the control, the leading to escalating violence, the, the reddest of red flags I heard the member for, for Tarnit and a few others say today. Uh, it's like flipping through a, a memory book, which is not great, uh, but now um, that there is a name for it and that there is legislation before the House, I am grateful, even though it's, it's 20 years too late for me. But like I said... Um, the, uh, the member for Malvern has also submitted an amendment and during discussions post-bill briefing, um, and I have been working for, with the member for Malvern on this quite closely, and I thank him for his time. He's been very, very generous uh, with his time on this and very gentle too, I might add, um, which has been great. Um, but working through some of the technicalities, which we've heard a lot about today, uh, there were suggestions that maybe they needed to be reviewed just because of some technical issues that may or may not arise over the, the implementation of this uh, legislation. So I hope the government will support uh, the Shadow Attorney General's uh, amendments on this bill uh, because I think it will be useful to have a review after uh, two years. Now that these incidents do have a name and... Uh, Victim survivors, survivors, and those that didn't survive have a voice and a language to put to them. Um, it gives, it does give us a voice, and I think it is important. And I was, I had toyed with, I had toyed for so long about speaking in this place, in a very public place, about this and my experiences in, in here. And some would say don't. Some would say if you can, you should. Others would say. Uh, why would you do it to yourself? But I think it's really important that, you know, lived experiences from myself and other members allow things like this, and it fuels a... I say it fuels my hate fire, but it fuels a passion uh, to work with, with survivors and to keep saying the names of those that didn't survive. Um, like my school friend, Sam Fraser, who the media have covered extensively, and she is back in the news today, and who didn't survive. And we'll keep saying her name. Just like we'll keep saying Joy's name. And I thank the, the Shadow Attorney General for referring to this as Joy's Law. It is very important. But it does make me so much more passionate to advocate for people that are brave enough to speak about this in public. Like Connor Paul who was here with Respect and the Victim Survivors Advocacy Group last week, um, and who has just launched a book called The Shadow That Follows. He was another one that actually inspired me and gave me language that I feel like I hadn't had before, given it's been 20 years uh, since this, this incident or this relationship happened to me. There was no language back then. It was 23 some years ago, there was no language, there was no words, there was no standalone legislation. In fact, I was told that I need to go and find somewhere to stay by the police 
in the, the flat that we shared, but after being controlled for six years, you have nowhere to go. So Connor Paul, when he came to me seeking out uh, my support to make coercive control also a standalone offence, uh, and he just happened to be in the building during the last sitting week, um, it was a great opportunity to sit down with the Shadow Attorney General and discuss how we might move that forward, because legislation such as this and coercive control go hand in hand. Um, and although it may be too late for some of us, um, it's better late than never. So I hope that is something that, that we can push forward, and I, hope, I do hope the government supports uh, the amendments that have, have been submitted by the, the member for Malvern. But I did mention Connor Paul's book that this extraordinary young man has written and had illustrated. It's called The Shadow That Follows, and it gives language to the feelings that he felt as a young man being in a family affected by coercive control, family violence. He didn't have the words for it, but this book gives language to that, and he's such a powerful advocate uh, for family violence and, and coercive control, and so brave to speak about his experiences publicly. So I figure if Connor can do it at 19 years old, there is no reason I cannot do it now, after 20-something years and at 43 years of, of age, that I can... Yeah, I'm 43, I know I hold it well. Um, there is no reason that I can't speak about it as well and help the advocacy efforts of Joy's family, of, of Connor, uh, of Kim O'Reilly and many others that, uh, that I've spoken to along the way. Thankfully, I got out and I did uh, marry the perhaps the greatest human that the good Lord's ever put breath into, although he would argue with me saying the good Lord, he would say no science, whatever, which is probably why he's, he's a great human. But like I said, there are many who don't or who cannot get out. And I mentioned uh, Samantha Fraser earlier, and I will keep saying her name because it's important that we do keep saying her name. After extensive coverage in the media, and again, like I said, being back in the media today post a court case involving her perpetrator, it's clear that we are a long way from eradicating family and domestic violence. A long way. But any step, such as this one, is a positive one. So, like I said, it's better late than never. And I certainly hope the government will support the amendments. And I thank the House for the opportunity to speak about this incredibly important issue. I said I would keep it brief. I did not. Thank you.